Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to be covering the binomial expansion theorem with an alternative strategy without using combinations, something that Algebra 1 students may, may or may not be familiar with. We can also use Pascal's triangle to help us with coefficients in our expanded result. So I have an example here. We're going to be simplifying 3x plus 2 to the fifth power. Now, early in Algebra 1, multiplying polynomials foiling, box method, expressions like this are very common. However, that becomes trivial when we increase the exponent. Past something like two or three, we don't want to be sitting there completing box method over and over again, multiplying polynomials. It can get very messy. It's a lot of work. It gets kind of redundant. So that's where the binomial expansion theorem comes in. This is going to help us find this result for something to the 10th power to the 20th power relatively quickly. I have some simplified steps there on the right. The first thing to uh, be aware of, or the first step, is how many terms are in your final answer? It's basically going to be one more than the exponent you're given. So in our example, our exponent here is to the fifth power, meaning we're going to have six terms in our final answer. We're also going to be utilizing row six of Pascal's triangle for our coefficients. So I'll highlight that down there. That's important. It's going to come into play a little bit later on. So what I like to do to kind of set up my work here, I call these like little platforms or little stations here. We're going to be putting several things within each term. So I like to give myself some space. Notice I have six of them because once again, we do have six terms in our final answer. The first thing that we're going to do is record our coefficients from the sixth row of Pascal. That's 1, 5, 10, 10, 5, 1. Pascal's triangle, while I'm writing, if you're not familiar with it, can be not something you have to like memorize. You can very simply complete this just by, if you notice the pattern here, adding the cell, uh, adding the two cells directly above a cell. So for example, uh, I'll highlight a random one over here. 35 is such because 15 and 20, their sum is 35. So any given cell within Pascal's triangle is the direct sum of the two cells on top of it. Starting off with ones, obviously, um, and it kind of builds up. You would never really have to worry. I have a very expanded version here. Obviously, in a binomial expansion theorem, we're probably not going to be doing anything too crazy with higher and higher exponents, but you could certainly just create this just by adding two numbers together. OK, so I've copied down the coefficients from Pascal's triangle. Next are terms that are in our binomial the two terms, 3x and 2, we're going to put those on each platform as well. So 3x separated, sorry, I should note. So each term goes on each platform. This is why, again, I like to use these little platforms because we have a lot of things going on here. We're not even done yet. I like to give myself some room. So the two terms in your binomial are separated with parentheses. A good question that usually comes up is, what if there's subtraction? If it said 3x minus 2, in blue, when I was writing the 2, I would incorporate that as a negative 2. Next is where our exponents come into play. There's a few things you can do with your exponents. That's step 3 in my steps there on the right. Um, we can start with an exponent of five. This should match whatever your, it was a little large. That should match whatever your original exponent was. And then it says descend. So for every other three X, I'm gonna count down, ultimately arriving at zero. And we're gonna do the opposite for the second term. Our second term is gonna instead start with zero and ascend or count up. Again, if you're watching this video kind of randomly here, we're not using combinations, which is the more probably popular or common way to apply this formula. We're using Pascal. Okay, now notice the exponents here always add up to five. That's something else that people will kind of do quickly here. There's a pattern of the two exponents will add up to five if you want to do a quick check. Now, the last step, we're kind of already there. We're just going to simplify this result. Unfortunately, that's still going to take us a decent amount of time here. We have some numbers, we got some decent exponents to take care of. Um, what I like to do first is with my exponents of zero, I put a little slash through them. 
Anything raised to the zero exponent is very simply just one. I just like to put a slash to kind of get it out of the way. I've seen students mistakenly say like uh, something to the zero power of zero, and then it messes up this whole process. So I like to just put a slash through it to say, hey, it's a one. I don't want to consider this anymore. Okay, now I'm going to zoom in. We're going to start simplifying every platform here, and this will give us our final answer. Now, this is something that students will do. 3x in parentheses raised to the fifth power. Unfortunately, that is not 3x to the fifth power. 3 is also raised to the fifth power in that expression. So be careful. We have to, that's going to keep happening throughout this process. So just be aware of that. 3 to the fifth power, you might want to grab a calculator when you start doing some exponents this large. 3 to the fifth power is 243. The variables are going to be easy here because there's no calculations for that. It's just x to the fifth. There was a one out front, so that doesn't change anything in my final answer. In my next platform, I'm gonna have x to the fourth power, and now let's figure out the coefficient. I have a five, a times two, that's just two to the first, and a three to the fourth. We know three to the fourth is 81, and then there's a times 10, that's just gonna be 810 x to the fourth. Sometimes you can do this without a calculator, but it's useful to have one on you. 3 to the third in our next one, we have 27. We have 4, we have 10, that's going to be 40. 27 times 40, we're going to get 1080. 1080 x cubed. Okay, we're working our way through here. In this next one, we have 2 to the third is 8. 3 squared is 9, that's going to be 72 times 10, 720 x squared. We have 2 to the fourth, we have uh, 16 there times 15, that should be 240x. And last but not least, our constant term is just gonna be two to the fifth power, which is 32. Again, the times one doesn't change anything. And this will give us our final result. It's already in standard form. We're working our way down from the highest exponent. Everything's fully simplified here. This is our final answer. So again, a quick recap here. An alternative strategy to expanding binomials raised to some higher degree, some higher exponent, we can utilize a row in Pascal's triangle to help us with the coefficients. Be aware, the coefficients in Pas uh, the numbers in Pascal's triangle don't end up being your final coefficients. Some people make that mistake. It's not like our final answer ended up being 1, 5, 10, 10, 5, 1. We kind of use that in the process. They are being multiplied by some of the numbers in the original binomial, and therefore they change to something like 1080 and 720 like we had. Okay, start by finding out how many terms are in your answer. I'd recommend doing something like this work-wise. Even with this, even though we're not doing box method, it can get a little messy. So give yourself plenty of space. Set up your platforms one more than the exponent you're given separate your two terms into like little parentheses for your exponents count down for your first term starting with the same exponent so we had to the fifth power we start with the five count down for that first term count up for your second term check that they always add up to your original exponent and then just take your time simplifying using a calculator as necessary okay this has been a hopefully quick video on binomial expansion Thank you for watching, and in the comments, let me know if you have any further questions or concerns. Thank you, and have a great day.